Welcome, welcome. We're so glad to see you in Town Square today. We're going to start with our worship. My name is Lauren. This is Miss Chrissy. And we want to tell you good morning. And we want to say a prayer to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts to dance and sing and praise with us. All right, guys? So let's just take a moment and say, Dear Heavenly Father, please just join us in this worship. And let us show you how much we love you. Ready, guys? Amen.
Yeah. 
my goodness. We got a packed house this morning. I love that. How are you this morning? Good. Oh, I'm so glad to have you all here. Guys, can you come off just off the stage? Because knowing me, I will step on your little fingers by accident, but I don't want to do that. So thank you so, so much. Raise your hand if you were here last week. Who was here last week? Yes. Do you remember who we learned about? Starts with an M. Do you, anyone remember how to say that name? Let me hear it. What is it? Pretty good. the Deck. Can you say that? the Deck? If you were here last week, you heard the story about him. And let me ask you, what did the four kings take from the cities of, of Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you remember what those kings took in the story? Yes. Did he take Lot? Yes. Did they take everything? Yes. Or just some things or a little bit or everything? Yes. They took everything, and you're right. They did also take Abraham's nephew, Lot. So those kings, are those nice guys? Yes. No. Well, speaking of Abraham, we're going to learn about him a little bit more today, too. But before we get to that, let me ask you some questions, because you guys know the answers to this. When you come into town square, who do we learn about? Jesus. Jesus. We help people find and follow. Jesus. That's right. And what special book do we use to learn all about Jesus? The Bible. Yours may look like this, or you may have one that looks different, but the Bible. That's right. Every single promise in the Bible is what? True. True. And happened in this? Great job. Our story today is about Abraham and his son. Do you know who his son is? Isaac. Can you say Isaac? Yes. It's going to be about Abraham and Isaac, and it comes from the book of Genesis. When you hear that it's in the book of Genesis, does it tell you that that's going to be in the Old Testament or the New Testament? Old Testament. Yes. In fact, it's the very first book in the Bible. Raise your hand if you knew that already. We're going to hear a story from the very first book of the Bible. Mr. Matt just put something up on the screen. Can you read that to me? What's the answer? God. That's right. Is he in control of everything in heaven? How about on earth? Yes. He's in control of everything. Does that mean he holds us in the palm of his hand? He controls everything for us too, doesn't he? And that is... That's a wonderful thing. That helps us feel safe and secure, doesn't it? Who is ready to watch our video? It's a good one this morning. I can't wait for you to see it. So if you will be crisscross applesauce, keep your hands in your lap, and let's look up here at the screens, and let's hear about Abraham and Isaac. God kept his promise to give Abraham a son. Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old when their son Isaac was born. One day, God tested Abraham. He wanted to make sure that Abraham loved God most of all. Abraham, God said. Here I am, Abraham answered. Take your son Isaac to the mountain and give him to me as a sacrifice, God said. Abraham obeyed God. He got up early the next day and left with Isaac, two servants, and a donkey carrying supplies. They walked for three days before they got to the mountain where God wanted Abraham to make the sacrifice. Abraham asked his servants to stay with the donkey. We'll be back, he said. Then he and Isaac went up the mountain with the supplies for the sacrifice. Isaac saw that something was missing. My father, he said, where is the lamb for the offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. When they got to the place God had directed them, Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on top. Then he put Isaac on top of the wood. Just as Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac, the angel of the Lord called out, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham stopped. Here I am, he said. The angel of the Lord said, Do not lay a hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me, 
Abraham looked up and saw a ram trapped by its horns in the bushes. He offered the ram to God instead of Isaac. Abraham named the place, The Lord Will Provide. The angel of the Lord reminded Abraham that God would keep the covenant he made with Abraham. God again promised to bless Abraham, to make his family as numerous as all the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashores. God promised victory over Abraham's enemies and blessings to all the earth through Abraham's family. Abraham showed his love for God by being willing to sacrifice his son Isaac. God provided a ram instead. This is how God showed his love for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that we could have eternal life through him. Girls. So, in the Bible, we learned this in the story today. In the Bible, sacrifices were something that a worshiper brought to God to express their obedience to him, their love for him, how thankful they were for things that God had given them. Sometimes they even did that as an act of asking for forgiveness for something. Usually sacrifices involve killing an animal. But in our story today, God actually asked Abraham to sacrifice what? His son. And it's the first and only time in the Bible that God has ever asked anyone to sacrifice another person. When God asked Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, what did Abraham do? Did he have a temper tantrum about it? No. Did he make excuses about why that shouldn't happen? No. What about, did he try to figure out some kind of way to get around God's plan? No. He didn't. What about listening and obeying God? Yes. He did that, didn't he? Did he do it right away or did he do it after a while? As soon as God asked him to sacrifice Isaac, he listened to God's command and he was ready to obey him, wasn't he? How do you think Abraham felt about God asking him to sacrifice his own son? Sad. Do you think he was excited? Do you think he just took Isaac and was so excited to just sacrifice him? Do you think he was jumping for joy and just thrilled? Do you think he was scared? Do you think he was even more than scared, maybe terrified? Yes. Yes. What about, do you know the word overwhelmed? Do you think maybe he was overwhelmed with confusion and just not sure why God would ask him to do that? Yeah. Abraham didn't understand. He didn't understand at all why God would ask him to sacrifice his son. But did he still listen and obey God? He sure did. He absolutely did. Remember that Abraham was a real person. He was a real person, which means he had real emotions. So he did, I'm sure, felt scared and worried and terrified and not sure what to do. God provided something else, though. Instead of him having to sacrifice Isaac, what did God provide? Yes. A ram. He did. He provided a ram instead. How do you think Abraham felt about that when he realized... You, do you think he, that made him feel better? How about relieved? Do you think he felt relieved that he didn't have to sacrifice Isaac? Yes. So let me ask you this. Do you think that God changed his mind? Shh, boys, boys, boys. Do you think that God started out wanting to sacrifice Isaac and then changed his mind to a ram? Or do you think he planned on the ram all along? So let me ask you this. Think. Put your thinking caps on. If God never planned on having Abraham sacrifice Isaac, why would he ask him? What do you think? Was he testing him? Do you think he was testing Abraham's faith to see if he would actually obey him in something he was asking him to do that sounded impossible? 
I'm a mama. I cannot imagine if God called on me to sacrifice one of my children. I can't imagine how that must have felt for Abraham. God wanted to test his faith to see, will you trust me in even the hard things I ask of you? How many of you have ever taken a test at school? Okay, put, go ahead and put your hands down. Do you ever get a little nervous? Yeah? Do you ever get a little scared? Do you get excited about tests? Maybe sometimes you do. Okay. I'm going to wait for you to be listening, please. Thank you. We've got a lot of us in here today, so we've got to be super quiet, okay? Our teachers give us tests, right? I used to be a teacher. I taught kindergarten and first grade and second grade. We give tests to our kids to see what they know, right? We have to test their ability. We have to test their knowledge, what they know. God will test us to see how we love him, if we are going to obey him, if maybe he's testing our knowledge on something. He may test us, but will he always be there to help us through it? He absolutely will. He will always, always do that. So, Abraham, did he have to sacrifice Isaac after all? No. But did he listen and obey God when he asked him to do that? He absolutely did. Great job. Okay. Boys and girls, are you ready to go back to class? Are you ready to learn more about this? Okay. I would love to pray for you. So if you would put your hands together. We're going to pray and then we're going to head back to class. Are you ready? Lord, thank you so much that you love us. Thank you so much that you are with us and that you want the best for us. Lord, we love you so, so, so much. Lord, sometimes you're going to test us. Sometimes you're going to see if we're going to listen to you, if we're going to obey you. But the good thing is that you are always with us and you are always there for our good. Everything you ever ask of us is going to be for our good and your glory. And we trust you, Lord. We trust you and we love you. And it's in your son's precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I need my kindergartners first. Just kindergarten. Everybody else, stay on your bottom.